backpack I've got everything you need for an ultralight hot tent camping experience. So I spent last night out here in the woods. It was minus two, but did it work? Did my gamble of making a warm tent sustainable all night, as light as possible, without using wood, pay off. So, enjoy the video. Okay, honey and I are down our local woods. We're very lucky to have this here. It's about a mile from my house in Northumberland. It's an area of ancient woodland and we're fine to camp here. So I need to get my 900 gram home and my two and a half kilo heater and stove set up. So first it's just a case of strapping the poles together to around the right height, then I can adjust it afterwards. And now I'm just gonna peg the four corners of the front range out. Right, that's me all set up. So it's a fairly basic setup. This is the Dometic Origo 5100, ready to go. And I've got pretty much a litre and three quarters of biofuel. I'm expecting one litre to last the whole night. I've just got a simple footprint on the ground. My Sea to Summit Ethylite Extreme, bed for the dog, an insulated mat and a Van Gogh sleeping bag and if I need it to go over the top the Rab Storm bivy and that's pretty much it so I'm going to light this and see what how the temperature changes in the moment in here it's 1.6 degrees uh, when I arrived it said minus 1.5 but I think just with my body heat and rustling around it's warmed up a bit in here so we'll light the stove and see what the temperature changes to. This is a bit of a, a tricky part. We have to take out the burner and fuel cartridge and take that out. And this is the fuel cartridge inside. So we've just got to fill this up. And I, I was using it a couple of nights ago, but uh, I think that's pretty empty now. So that should, that should take a full liter of fuel. And it's just a case of pouring this in here nice and slow and that's like an absorbent felt like material that will soak up all the fuel in there and I think once it starts to brim over the top you'll know that it's full and the idea is with this is that it's not going to spill on a sloshing boat because they were originally designed as uh, boat heaters but uh, you know, you can use it for anything. So that's that full litre gone in there. And you see, it doesn't spill. And there's a little drip there, but that's not spilling at all. Pretty amazingly. So quite good stuff in there. That's so just a case of popping this burner back on there. That just clicks down onto the top. Make sure that's in. Okay. I'm an idiot. I had trouble lighting it because I had the lid shut. Right, now to make a cup of tea. Now that's just perfectly the wrong size for the uh, small Soto pot. But I guess I can just rest that somewhere in the middle there. And brew that like that that'll be fine it's designed for a bigger pot than that but what the hell I want a cup of tea so you can imagine that would be for a some big heavy pot when you are out on your ship but you know it's a, it's a pretty safe thing to have around here a note on safety uh, while I'm on the subject is 
should never have a naked flame burning like this in an enclosed tent. Uh, really, really dangerous. So people have died from bringing uh, barbecues into their tent before. Now, I've done my research and I'm happy with this because I'm burning bioethanol and uh, the byproducts are just carbon dioxide and water. So my biggest concern uh, when I leave this going over the night is uh, moisture. But I've got it well ventilated. I've got a vent here. I've got the door open here. I've got a gap all around the tent and the bottom of the door open. So I'm quite confident I'll have a little bit of a th through draft going through and I'm not in any danger of any noxious fumes. But, you know, otherwise, just don't do it. <laughs> right, how's honey? You okay in your bed there? Should be warm as toast there. He's a great camp dog, aren't you? You just know what the crack is. And we'll get snuggled up and we'll be absolutely fine. So I'm liking this front range. It's a, it's a nice place to be. It's not got a massive amount of gang points on the outside and I wouldn't like it in any wind, but there's a number of options that I'm looking at and I'll put a picture on uh, now. I think what would be uh, absolutely brilliant, brilliant that I've been looking at is the Nortent Bivouac. Uh, that's potentially more stable. Might take a little bit more pitching, but it's a, a simple tarp that you can configure in a number of uh, configurations but it's got a jack for a stove so on a camp like this and it only weighs 1.3 kilos you could bring it and bring the titanium stove and that would be uh, absolutely superb so yeah this is a a, a new uh, a new uh, kind of uh, different way of looking at things for me to be honest just the the simple structure and I really really enjoyed a couple of weeks ago when I was uh, out in the Nortent Lavo just a single skin simple structure uh, of course this is a much smaller kind of version of that so yeah it's a, it's a, it's a new age for me when I was normally I've been in a tent with an inner tent uh, and it's uh, it makes a really nice changing seconds to cool and then I'll put it in the cozy and I'll be able to drink straight out of that because the upper edges of the titanium mug will cool down. Put the lid on while that brews. So I want to thank my friend Andy for loaning me the uh, top bought everything myself uh, for this night out including the Dometic Origo and I'd really like to know your thoughts in the comments if you know of any other safe tent heaters so I think this is discontinued now but there are still a few around so yeah let, let me know if you know of any other ways to do this other than a wood stove which is absolutely fabulous and a great organic way to do it but of course uh, natural wood isn't always available and a titanium stove is a great solution but if you haven't got wood available you're potentially carrying fuel in you've got that time to cut it so for an ultra light quick cold weather overnighter what else can you do it's a great community out there on youtube so uh, let me know your ideas. I bet some of the Americans and Canadians have got some, some good ideas with that. So, just get the snow off that. And get the handle there out of the way. All we've got to do now is put the lid on that. Exterminate. And what that'll do now is just, uh, snow's melting already, uh, that enables the uh, heat to warm the metal and dissipates it more. 
but you could put something on that just to heat up slowly. And I know uh, I know of somebody who actually put a whole foil pie on that and uh, heated it up. Brilliant. Right, getting pretty toasty in here now. So, I don't know if you can see that okay, but at the bottom of the tent there, it's uh, 8.3 degrees. And up here, a couple of feet higher, it's uh, 13 degrees it's getting up to on the uh, temperature gauge there. Yeah, 13 degrees. So, to turn it down, just a, a case of pushing the slider across like that to reduce the flame down and it works the, pretty much the same way as a transier or just a little blocker and since I'm on a little slope and I'm a bit worried about rolling on it and then I'm just going to push it right over there and then the uh, hole here in the middle will stop me sliding over there. So, good. I'm going to get ready for bed then and uh, I'll say good night. And the, the nice thing about this is I know it'll burn all night and it's pretty stealthy as well. So I'm fine being here in the woods. Nobody will come down here. I'll leave no trace in the morning, etc. But it's just nice to know that I haven't got a load of wood smoke coming out the top and uh, this associated smell, that little tiny flame in there won't be visible from the outside should somebody uh, go past on the path that's about, I don't know, 50 metres away. Very, very unlikely. And I'll be gone at first light, but there'll be no bright evidence and smoke uh, to give my location away in the night. Good. So, uh, good night then, and uh, I'll... See you in the morning. Fish. Well, good morning. I don't know if you can hear the, the snow sliding off the front range here, but it's uh, 7.23 in the morning and uh, I've lay here kind of cold, wondering whether to get moving. So the bioethanol heater was brilliant until about half past three and it went, went off and uh, I heard it puttering, and that's what woke me up, and just as it was going out. And so I uh, pulled over me this uh, Rab Storm Bibby, but I've woken up pretty wet inside here. Uh, not the most breathable. Yeah, but otherwise I slept like a baby, in other words. Woke up. And that, and that's not true at all, actually. I've had a really good night and honey here has been all wrapped up in the mountain equipment and the perna jacket and with a coat on and on her sleeping bag and she's crawled out a little bit there probably a bit too warm so there's a bit of oh there's snow or slide of there's a bit of condensation on the inside of the front range here but now i've just put the heater back on i'll just see if that clears away so yeah, when I lay here this morning at kind of half past six thinking, can I be bothered to kind of disassemble it but, and put more fuel in? But actually it only took a few minutes to do so. 
that straight away, that's putting a nice warmth in here. And when I woke up and checked, it was two degrees in here. And uh, three, but already the air feels much warmer in here, much nicer. Okay, good, so we're gonna lie here a little bit longer and enjoy the warmth and, uh, and get packed up see what this weather's like outside. Right, as we've been getting packed up in here, the temperature's gone, shooting up to a pleasant nine to 10 degrees. So really quite nice. So I'm gonna put the heater off now and uh, it's dawn. So it's time to get out of here. Beautiful. Come out to a fresh fall of snow. So this has been great, the tent heater. Uh, it, it, what would be amazing if you had two of the cartridges and you could just swap them over in the night because you can't do a hot refill. But it was no hassle just to fill it up and top it up this morning and get going. And that's all down pretty quickly. Ready for putting in my rucksack. Just nest. So in terms of ecology and the bioethanol heater as well, I'm pretty happy with that. It's cost me about £2.50 in fuel and it's a byproduct of uh, crop fermentation. 